News of the Rebel Alliance's victory over Endor and the death of Emperor Palpatine spread like fire across the galaxy, sparking widespread celebrations and fracturing the once indestructible unified empire as ambitious Imperials began carving out its remains for themselves. Despite the historic battle that occurred on its very surface, the forest moon of Endor soon returned to its native inhabitants following the Rebels' withdrawal, who believed it no longer served a strategic purpose for either side and that all combatants had been accounted for. Unknown to the Rebels, however, there was not only an entire Imperial unit that still remained on the moon following their withdrawal, but also one of their own had been left behind as well. Thirteen months after the battle, a lone scout trooper speeding down the forest had his bike's battery finally give out. As he inspected his former ride, a rebel hiding in the trees ambushed the trooper with his blaster rifle. Acting quickly, the scout grabbed his rifle and pushed off his attacker, only to realize the weapon's power pack was as dead as his bike. The two immediately jumped into a brawl, lasting for 45 minutes before both men got tired and called a truce. As they recovered, they discussed the outcome of the battle, both believing their side had won and dismissing each other's confidence in their respective side's battle plans. Eventually, the rebel began to leave only to be attacked by the scout trooper, who believed he was escaping his custody, only for both to fall into a trap laid by the Ewoks. Luckily for the rebel, this was the same Ewok tribe that had come across the original strike team from over a year ago with them treating him as a guest as a result, while the scout trooper was taken as a prisoner. After the rebel convinced the Ewoks to let him go, the scout trooper began to open up, revealing how his unit was given orders to stand by on the far side of the moon, and that they remained stationed regardless of never receiving any communications since. He also revealed to be a clone like the rest of his men, making him perhaps one of the very last standard clones produced by the Empire prior to their complete shutdown following the rebellion on Kamino. It is also possible that his unit was the one Palpatine was referring to as being his finest legion guarding the shield generator, seeing as they were all clones. But because the commanding officer in charge of the Imperial ground forces on Endor was killed so early in the battle, they likely never received his order to move in as a result. Nonetheless, the clone finally abandoned his post after the rest of his men succumbed to the wilderness of the moon, coming to question his own programming of being bred solely for war and for choosing duty over the lives of his own brothers. The Rebel, on the other hand, revealed himself to be part of the original Alliance strike team, but was separated from the main group after their initial skirmish between Imperial bike troopers. Despite both coming to the moon as soldiers, the paths they took afterwards were in complete contrast. While the clone and his men remained as soldiers until the very end, committing to their training to the point of still eating their rations even after they had long gone stale, the Rebel was able to adjust to his new life in peace, becoming a carefree hunter and enjoying the gifts of the lush forest moon provided him, including potent Ewok Kush he couldn't get enough of once he had gotten a taste for it. The two men eventually got the Ewoks to lead them to the shield generator, with them finally witnessing that the Empire had indeed lost the battle. While distressed with this fact, the clone was more concerned over them being stranded on the moon, desperately searching for anything that could be used to contact the greater galaxy. They soon came across a semi-operational ATST walker. As the clone began activating the walker, a Gorax from the wilderness stormed the Ewoks that had escorted them. Although the clone was ready to abandon them, not wishing to risk using up the remaining power of the walker, the rebel purposely drew the creature's attention to their position, forcing the clone to fire the walker's blasters as it charged at them, killing the beast and saving the Ewoks as a result. This set the clone off, who couldn't believe a trained soldier would act so recklessly, dismissing the rebel's idealism of protecting the Ewoks who had helped them. The argument was cut short, however, when they picked up a nearby Imperial signal, believing it was an outpost. The clone made haste, convincing the rebel that he would be treated well under his protection, but his hope was shattered once more, as the signal was instead coming from a crashed Star Destroyer. On top of that, the ship had received orders for a system-wide evacuation, showing the clone that his brother's sacrifices had been for nothing, and in the end, they were abandoned just like the equipment around them. As the Rebel worked to get the communications online, the clone reflected on his recent experiences, becoming indifferent upon learning his new friend had successfully contacted a trade transport to pick them up. The clone no longer felt like he had a place in the galaxy, at least for someone who only understood war like he did. 
Instead, he decided to remain on Endor, perhaps wishing to find himself and reconnect with the life around him like his rebel friend had, to maybe one day return to the wider galaxy, not as a soldier, but as something more. And it seems that he ultimately did, with the comic ending with the clone finally relaxing and smoking that Ewok Kush upon the ATST walker, likely making peace with his past and looking ahead for a new purpose in his life.